Good evening, good evening, and welcome back to a, another episode of Let's Talk Destiny. I am your host, Jamie Green, and um, I'm excited to be here tonight because in spite of everything that's going on in the world, in my life, on my street, on my block, in my apartment complex, everything, whatever is going on, I'm still here and I'm still able to talk with you um, tonight. Tonight, I have a special guest with me, and I know I use that word a lot because I can't think of another word, but my guest tonight is extremely special to me. She inspires me as a woman. She inspires me as a woman of color. She inspires me as a woman of faith. Um, she just inspires me all the way around. And so tonight, I'm excited to have back here on this platform, my sister friend, Mrs. Lisa in Alexander. Welcome. Hey, James. Cena. I don't know who Jamie is. I know who James Cena is. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Happy to be back on the show. That's funny. <laughs> Thank you. It's so good to have you. I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to talk to you tonight. Um, I'm having some kind of a delay here. I've I've con concluded that I need to upgrade my Wi-Fi. I think that's my issue. Mm -hmm. But anywho, um, I'm excited to have you here tonight because whenever I'm in a period, uh, a place on my journey where I feel, um, okay, I don't know if I can take another step. I think um, this is it. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything else. I think of you and I see you post something on social media or I hear of something that you're doing and it motivates me to keep going. Um, I think about our conversation the last time we talked when I was your guest on your pod podcast and we talked about pivoting and and making adjustments as necessary. And so that keeps me going on in those moments when I feel like um, I just need to stop. And I and then I realize I can't stop. As long as I'm breathing, I have to keep going. And so I'm very excited that we, we are starting out this year having this conversation because at the end of a year, uh, most people, and I'm not going to say everybody because that really disturbs me when people say everybody. Um, most people, they come up with a list of resolutions. If they don't have a list, they do have at least one or two things they say, I'm going to do next year. I'm going to accomplish in this coming year. And then somewhere around April or May, uh, we lose some gas and um, some of the fire starts going out. We have a few embers left. And we kind of just like, you know, trying to keep stoking those embers um, because we don't want the fire to go completely out. But I wanted to talk to you tonight about the last conversation you and I had. We also talked about this amazing indie film that you have written and produced and directed and all that good stuff. And we're still, you know, trying to get funds together to pre present that Um but I want to talk to you about what it's like. I call it the in the meantime part of the journey. What is it that we feel or that we should be feeling when we're ha having this period where we need to just stop, make some adjustments, uh, recalibrate some things? How do you do that? How do you feel right when you're in that place that's in the, in the meantime before the manifestation of your dream? Can I be honest? Sometimes in that waiting period, you get frustrated because Please. we as we as humans, we want what we want yeah. when we want it and we want it right now. And why do I have to wait? And what else is that? What else is at play? I think that's a question we all ask. It's like, what am I waiting on? What else needs to happen? Do I need to do anything else? Um, these are questions that we often ask ourselves. But there is a a beauty and a blessing in in waiting in the, in that wait. And if you look at the season, so my father, the queen, we took a we took a break 
because we went hard last year. We, oh my God, um, we did so many things and met so many incredible people and formed so many connections and grew our social media. Now it's not huge, but we started from zero. And so we have a social media yeah. following um, it, and it's growing. Right. And so last year we, we, we pushed really hard and made some serious inroads. We had conversations I never thought I would be having um, with A-listers and their, their PR people. And so, it, so after our event in November in Chicago, we took a respite. Mm -hmm. We took a much needed respite and the world pretty much goes on vacation. Everybody kind of like tunes out anyway for the holidays and not a lot of businesses right. conducted normally. Right. And so we took a break and I didn't really think too much about my father, the queen while I was on, while I was on break. And to your point, yeah. you were saying, that, you know, the, at the new year, January 1st is when we typically start up all the, you know, new, new year's resolutions. I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop these last 20 pounds or, you know, I'm, a, I'm not going to do this anymore. And we have all these resolutions that we want to um, start and engage in. But if you look at the time of the year, we're in the dead of winter. Nothing is growing yes. in the winter. Yes. When are we supposed to be hibernating we're yes. supposed to self-care we're supposed to be you know it's a time of rest and so even though the new year falls in that if we can kind of just like push back those new year's resolution to the spring when things are you know you seeds yeah. are growing and you're planting things that's an excellent time we're still resting right. over here <laughs> we're still resting and you yeah. know we're starting to have, yes. have conversations yes. again of um what we want to see for this new year um how we'll continue um, and what that looks like. But for right now, <laughs> a while ago, I would say a good maybe five years ago, I was instructed to enjoy the journey. At the height of that, life was very chaotic for me. And I'm going, I don't understand what you all are telling me to enjoy the journey. There's nothing enjoyable about what's what I'm currently experiencing. And so it's it, for me, it was a matter of carving out these moments of joy in your life. And then that's how I could enjoy the journey. Because once yes. we cross, once we cross this path, then we're done, right? We don't come back. If you pass your test, you don't get, you don't come back. You if you pass second grade, you don't go back to second grade, right? Enjoy second grade while you're in right, second grade. Right, right. All right. <laughs> so, yes. So uh, I'm yeah. I'm enjoying this downtime, enjoying this respite. Um, sometimes I do get anxious because it's not like me to sit very long, um, and that whole be still thing, kind of. Um, yeah. It 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 makes this Virgo itch, and so. Um, <laughs> But I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely. I'm I'm doing. I am enjoying this journey. I am doing a lot of journaling, doing a lot of writing, and just listening and getting instruction. And so while I said all of that to say that while we're in these moments of waiting, get instruction, rest, hydrate yourself, moisturize, yes. Yes. do all, take care of it's yourself life. because the next leg of the journey. You'll be running. That's absolutely. And, you know, I was thinking that, you know, really um, society, including the church, uh, you and I were both raised in the church um, and society in general teaches us as women that we should mm -hmm. always be doing something. Um, you know, the whole idle hands are the devil's workshop. I mean, they drilled that into our head from childhood. And then when you become, especially as a female, oh my God, you're always <laughs> supposed to be doing something, either darning socks, milking cows, something like you should never just be idle. Um, and so we we have that ingrained in us. And then as we get older, we, we get frustrated even more because we've been doing it for so long. But our bodies are telling us, sis, I need a break. Yes. And this is something that I've learned, Lisa, even in what appears to be a barren season, 
of your life, mm -hmm. you can still be productive. True. We're still producing. Yeah, we're still producing, maybe just not like we were doing it, but we're still producing. I remember during mm -hmm. uh, the pandemic, um, there was, you know, and I'm horrible with names or whatever, but it was a white gentleman. I think he's like a famous rock singer, rock star, whatever. Anyway, they were interviewing him about how he was coping with being locked in and not being able to do concerts and you not travel, you know, like he had done for so many years because of the pandemic. And he said, oh, I've written a number of songs since I've been home. And once we're able to go back out, you know, we'll be able to get in the studio with them. And he said something that really stuck out to me. He said, when you can't do what you usually do, you do what mm -hmm. you can do. And I thought about that because in those moments, as you said, when we're taking a respite, when our bodies are saying, okay, I need a break. And our minds and our spirits are saying, I need you to be still for a little bit. Um, we are hearing things that we normally wouldn't hear when we're so busy, mm -hmm. busy, busy in our spirit. The spirit speaks to us in quiet time. And so mm -hmm. I think I've learned a lot about one of the things that I've learned in this season of my life with the uh, physical issues and sicknesses and whatever is going on. I, um, I've i learned, hi, Cheryl, I've learned to um, hear, listen more with my spirit as opposed to where I was always having to listen to people because I was always mm -hmm. doing something, doing something, doing something. So I'm listening to what these people are saying. But now I've learned to be more in tune with what the spirit is speaking to my spirit. So that's what the in the meantime thing does for me. It strengthens my ability to hear in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Realm. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I think that's yes. true for anybody that's kind of like plugged in or walking this kind of this spiritual journey. It's like in, it's in those quiet moments that I get instruction and that you can breathe. And let's talk about the benefit of rest. Ancestors didn't get a chance to rest. So rest is a luxury that not all of us can take. And so I remember yes. saying once before, if you can afford to rest, do that. Absolutely do that. And it that's not doing nothing. And so we really need to, and especially as women, we really need to get out of that headset, that mind space, that if I'm not doing anything, yeah. I'm not productive. If I am sitting on my sofa, contemplating my belly button, then I am resting. I am rejuvenating. <laughs> I, I am, I am, I am, I am, I'm, I'm resting. I'm giving my body and my mind a break, a much needed break because we go, go, go so much. And we have to have that time just to replenish ourselves. So it could, it can be a bubble bath, you know, I know I can't take your phone call. I'm going to be submerged in an Epsom salt bath. That's what we're doing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's what we're doing. Yeah. So I was also thinking when I was uh, thinking about this conversation tonight, um, not only are you a creative person, like um, you're one of those people that I can give you, I can say, Lisa, I have this idea in my head or I have this desire in my heart and I don't really know where to go or whatever. And you are blessed with the gift um, to be able to give st structure um, and give order. That's a part of the reason why you are known as the marketing stylist, because you can give, you know, very strategic ideas about uh, marketing. But when you think about being a creative person, period, do you find that um, even dealing with trying to get your film out there and any other projects that you do through your um, production company and anybody that's listening to me, if you need, you know, a documentary done, you need some type of production done, please hit Lisa up. 
um, we're going to get her information for her company before we close out today. But do you feel like in the world period where we are creatives and where we have ideas that is more challenging for women and then even more challenging for women of color? Let me see if I understand. Um, as creators, is it more challenging to be a creative as a woman and as a woman of color? Is that is that not the question? necessarily to be um, not necessarily to be a creative because we are period right um, that's one of the things that I talked about um, during the webinar sun Saturday about this celebrating femininity we mm -hmm. are just by nature creative period but do you think it's challenging particularly like when you're trying to get your independent film out there mm. um or we're trying to do anything on a large scale do you think that because you are a woman and because you're a woman of color that some people um back away or hesitate to support what you're doing that's going to be an absolute yes and i think we've just recently seen that played out in hollywood with taraji and her saying you know, her whole conversation about how she can't get paid what she's worth. And every time she has to go to negotiate, she's starting from square one. We heard that from Monique. This is not an, a new conversation. This is not an oh, gas. Oh, really? You know, it's like black women aren't getting paid what they're worth. And, oh, you know, black women can't get their films made. Ava DuVernay, the incomparable yes. Ava DuVernay had to fund origin herself. She had to fund that That's because right. nobody was giving her money. And so she had to she had to fund raise like the rest of us indie filmmakers because that's what she had to do because of the kind of story that she was um, she was telling because origin it, it that's that it's a story. Uh, it should be seen by every human is what I'm saying. <laughs> every human, regardless. Yeah. regardless of LGBTQ status, regardless of skin color, religion, non-religion, that's a movie to see and you go with an open mind. I digress. Um, and so we are, wow. and even Erica Alexander talked about the struggles of being a woman of color and meeting so much opposition. And so I know that both of these incredible women have said that Hollywood was not designed for people of color. It's, it, it's, we, we were not built right, into the right. system. And so to hear these women talk, to hear people like even Billy Porter, it's, it's going to be difficult on whatever level you're on. Even if you're in Hollywood, even if you're an outsider or an indie producer like myself, yeah. it's a challenge. It's, it is absolutely a challenge. It doesn't mean that it's not possible. Absolutely. It just means that it's, um, it's a challenge and that we have to find other ways. Absolutely. And I wanted to, yeah. I wanted to bring that point out because I know, um, a lot of people, a lot of women that I know, uh, whether they are painters or, um, like one of my girlfriends is on here, uh, now Cheryl, she, she paints um, and she's also a hairstylist and, you know, she's a very creative mindset. Um, but even with the art that she does, it's not always easy to get people to purchase it. Like they'll say, oh, my God, that's amazing. That's beautiful. How did what? How did you do that? I would never be able to do that. And then they walk away. And so mm -hmm. this is like on every level we see that our creativity is not all the time respected. Like you said, it doesn't matter if you're in Hollywood or if you're in Houston or if you're in Salisbury, wherever you are, it's just not going to be respected like it probably should be. So this is what I wanted you to talk to us tonight about. And you've shared, you know, what you're doing in this downtime or in the meantime, I should say, um, and I just wanted everybody to be encouraged. And that's why I brought you on, because you have that gift of encouraging women, especially um, entrepreneurs and women mm -hmm. who have visions and dreams 
and goals that they're trying to reach, but they may be feeling overwhelmed and frustrated mm -hmm. and discouraged. And I, so that's why I wanted you to come on tonight because I know you've been blessed with the ability to speak life into situations where people may feel mm -hmm. like I just can't, I just give up. I just quit. And so yeah. ultimately what we're saying tonight is don't give up. Just take a break if you need to, but don't give up. Yes, absolutely. So do and you have, you already have a schedule? Go no, ahead, we sorry. do not. I'm having a delay over here. <laughs> No worries. We don't have a, a schedule. So what we're doing now, my producing partner, her name is Catherine J. Hatam. So we're meeting and again, greasing the wheels. It's like, okay, so how do we want to move forward? And so um, I'm doing interviews again, because those have been very beneficial to the film and at least getting the word out. And so what I would encourage those that are listening who are creatives, who have dreams, who have visions, who have entrepreneurial goals and, you know, getting started, or you may be in the thick of it, you know, and, you know, things don't always go as you had planned, had you had hoped, you know, life happens to all of us. I think one of the things Oprah said is like, nobody, Oprah was quoting someone, nobody leaves here unscathed. Nobody. Right, right. And so we all right. are going through something. So I would encourage you to know that first, it's like, you're not alone you are so not alone. You are not the only one having this experience. This, um, it, it, there, there can be some imposter syndrome and it's like, do I really know what I'm doing? Am I really capable yeah. of doing these kinds of things? Um, are they going to find out, um, you know, that I'm, 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 huh, I'm building the plane while I'm flying kind of thing, yeah, because that's yeah. a lot of us find ourselves in those situations because of, who we are, where we are. A lot of us don't come from wealth. People we don't come from, people with who are deeply networked and can introduce us, make a phone call, introduce us here. And so we're learning right. as we build, right? And and that's okay. And how you um achieve or attain the knowledge, you have the knowledge, right? So no matter doesn't matter if you stayed up and watched YouTube, university and TikTok um to learn a thing, you learned it and you have that information now so you can you know what they know and so yeah. just be encouraged um i would say that just meeting pe people for the sake of meeting people can sincerely bless your life um if i could encourage you to just do that just to move outside of your network i'll share this so once upon a time it's been over 10 years um well over 10 years. And so I was newbie in business, probably 2008. So I'm new, I'm, I'm new to business. And I noticed that when I go networking, I'm seeing the same people. And I know that the same people are where I am in business. And this is not where I, this is not where I need to be hanging out. Right. And so I, yeah. because I need to meet, I need to meet some other people who I, I need to be able to cross over and meet some more people. We'll put it that way, right? And I remember I was minding my own business and I heard Spirit say, you need to volunteer. It's like, volunteer? Like, okay, volunteer. And so I started volunteering. And because what that was, volunteering is a bridge into the network that I needed to get into. So if okay. people have the ability to go volunteer in the middle of the day, then those are the kinds of people that I need to be attached to who need to know my name. Right. And yes, so yes. that opened up so many doors just by wow. listening and following that one piece of uh, wisdom that was downloaded go volunteer. And it's like, and there, there was no clue as to where, you know, there were no instructions, find something, pick something, go for it. And so mm -hmm. I did a lot of work with um, sex trafficking and that just, oh, the, the rest is history. It, and so in this downtime, in this current downtime, that thing came up again. It said, go volunteer. And it's like, wow. okay. And at, so, I hear go volunteer and then I see this volunteer. I mean, this really cool volunteer opportunity. I won't say what it is yet. I'll wait till it's finished and done and then share. Yeah. And I'm going, 
oh, this is awesome. And so they had two volunteer um, dates available. You could go that day or you could go Saturday. So it's like, I'm going to go Saturday. Holy Spirit said, no, get up, sis. You ain't got nothing to do. Get dressed, go. And so <laughs> I went. <laughs> I went and God positioned me in such a way because I was obedient. He said, go volunteer. I go that day and I'm going, look how I've been set up. It's like, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I would say be obedient yes. to what you hear, be open, be willing to go outside of your circle. And that's one of the things I tell uh, sister James Cena all the time. It's like, be willing to go outside of your circle and network that's outside right. of your circle. You have to. You have to. You and have, that is so true have, because like, even with the advocacy work that I do, um, and you have encouraged me so many times to not get frustrated when people don't respond, just keep doing what you're doing. And I have connected in the last month, I've connected with people I never would have thought I would ever even have a conversation with. Um, about the advocacy work and I, I, I've, you know, signed uh, some petitions for some bills that are currently in the Senate and in the House and things that I never, ever thought I would be doing. Um, yeah. And it all goes back to stepping outside that comfort zone and, and just acknowledging the fact that, OK, I'm in this place right here and this is not working. So I need to change and find mm -hmm. something that is working. And sometimes mm -hmm. when we are just, life is just happening and we don't want to do the extra work, <laughs> but sometimes that's what's required. Just that one bit of obedience yes. and you'll see a, a door swing open that you don't oh even God. have to knock on. It just comes open. It's a whole truth. Obedience, what does it say? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obe There's so much to being obedient to what you hear. Not what somebody told you, but what do you hear? And I believe that we all have the ability to hear from our, for ourselves that you can hear. You don't have to go pay. I'm going to go off somewhere. Yes. You have the ability to hear for yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is, and it is so important because, you know, as I said earlier, we've been programmed to, to believe we can only do certain things a certain way. We can only hear God in a certain place. We can only hear God if we're in a certain position. And there's a lot of things that we have to unlearn because we are missing too many messages because we are not open to hear mm -hmm. what the Spirit is trying to say to us. And so I've learned in nature, I've learned in just watching a baby, I I'm going to say this, and then we're almost coming to the close of our time together. If anyone has any questions that you'd like to ask Lisa, feel free to put them in the comment section. She'll be glad to answer you. Absolutely. Um, today, I had I had to go to a doctor's appointment. You know, it's like I live at the doctor's office. And um, the a lady was there. She had a little boy, and he was a toddler, and she had an infant. And so, you know, every time I see a baby girl, I just get all excited because I have two sons and five grandsons. So I'm like sick of little boys. So, <laughs> anyway, I was just staring at the little girl and talking to her. And she was just smiling and smiling. And I said, oh, my gosh, she's such a happy baby. And the mom said, yeah, she's my mirror. She's a miracle baby also. I said, really? She said, yeah, she's a tubal baby. Um, she oh. said, when I was pregnant with her, the doctors told me that it didn't look like she was going to make it. So they wanted to terminate the pregnancy. And she said, um, they said, we're going to have to operate. We're going to have to, she said, well, you're going to have to do whatever you have to do because I'm not giving up my baby. I believe God blessed me with her and I'm not going to, um, just give up on her. And so there sat the baby, like perfectly healthy, wow. just, you know, whatever. And she said, you know, I said, oh my God, that's such a blessing. But then she went on to tell me that she had, that was her seventh child. I was thinking, <clears throat> okay, sis, that might be enough. But uh, um, anyway, hallelujah. Wow. Um, so the, the point 
just from listening to her talk and watching her with those kids, I could feel the presence of God and I could hear God because mm. she was just kept saying over and over, they told me that my baby wasn't going to make it. They just kept telling me. She said, I kept telling them, yes, she is. She is going to make it. So this is an example of what I'm saying. We yeah. have to be open and willing and available to hear the spirit wherever we are. Because as I sat there, I was thinking about some of the things that the doctor said to me yesterday. And I, my body was like, okay, that's, you know, I'm tired. My mind was mm-hmm. saying, my body is like, every week is something new. I'm just like tired. Mm-hmm. I just felt like I'm going to go get in the bed and not get up. Mm-hmm. But when I heard her say that, and the baby was still looking at me, just smiling, all gums. And um, I heard the spirit say, you still have life. When she said, it, my baby is alive and my baby has life. And I heard the spirit say, you still have life. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like you said a few minutes ago, we have to be open to hear the spirit anywhere, anytime, yes. in any situation. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Wow. I'm still thinking about the seven kids. My God. Anyway, <laughs> moving right along. God bless you. But her. Um, God bless her. That's all I can say. Um, yeah, that, that was very important, Lisa, because we have to be listening. Sometimes mm-hmm. we miss messages because we're just not listening. And very true. There was a very right. wise woman who once said um, that we often pray and we'll ask for instruction. We'll ask for download. We'll ask for answers to be revealed. And we'll miss the Facebook post that had the answer. We'll miss the you know, email that came through that had the answer. We'll you know, miss the opportunity to talk to somebody sitting next to us because we're in our phone who might have had the answer as well. And so you really do have to be open. And I can't tell you how many times answers have come on a Facebook post that somebody posted because it's like and followed through with it or, you know, did the reason it's like and answers can come from anywhere instruction, your next step, it can come from anywhere. The idea is to be open um, and Absolutely. to be able to see it. So you have to, you know, when you do pray and it's like, okay, let me be able to see what it is that you're showing me that I don't want to be blind to opportunities because right. that's a bad thing. It's like, if I'm blind to an opportunity and completely missed it, and it's like, Lord, yes. please don't let me, I don't want to miss it. Right. And so yeah. sometimes I can, um, be up way too longer, than, longer than I should. It's like, go to bed. You know, it's like, you know, scouring, scouring the internet, <laughs> You know, it's like, am am I missing anything? What am I missing? And then sometimes it's like, just sometimes it's just rest. Sometimes it's no, we're not doing anything. And so what I've been hearing is lean into what I've already told you. Lean into what you know. Lean into the thing that you desire. Lean into that and shut off all the foolishness and just rest while things are working. That doesn't mean absolutely that you 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 do nothing. There's still you know some level of work even in this, but it's not. It's I'm not at full throttle, and sometimes right, you right. scale back. Sometimes there are times absolutely. you'll go full throttle, girl. Pedal to the metal is like let's go. You know, last year yeah. it was pedal to the metal, always gone, always doing something. You know, always writing, and so right now it's the it's like take a deep breath. And you, you'll wish that you had rested when things yeah. pick up. And now you're like, you, can, did I get six yeah. hours of sleep last night? You know, so exactly. take, take these moments of respite, take these moments of rest, get clear, get clarity, take care of yourself because that's yes. important. Your health is important. James Cena will testify to this. Take care of your self do what you have to do for your own self care yes. eat right and, and go for a walk if you can um turn off social yeah. media so sometimes you need to unplug and so those things are so important in your own self care they help your ability to hear 
um, Absolutely. and just take care of your, um, of, of your physical and your mental, all of that is important. And when do you get to do Absolutely. that if you're always running? So take care of yourself. Um, take this moment, this, in the, in this winter season, take time to just kind of like go within and, and take care. Wow. And, you know, as we're, as we're closing, I've already said that once, but you know, they say preachers usually say that like three times before they actually my third stop closing. Talking. Yes. But, um, <laughs> Bishop Jakes, <laughs> Bishop Jakes wrote a book some many years ago, um, about the, I can't even remember the title of the book, but it was about the different uh, stages of life for women. And um, mm. he, in each season of your life, summer, spring, winter, fall, you know how Bishop Jake does. He broke it down as to what should be happening in your life. And he taught, and during that time, I started a uh, fellowship at my parents' church for the mothers of the church called the Winter Women. Um, mm. And how so many times in that season, their lives they feel forgotten and mm -hmm. unneeded and you know nobody comes to visit them on a regular basis mm -hmm. the kids don't call all that stuff so, so we you know we get together monthly and have you know things together with them and I was thinking as you were talking about the season of rest there is a season in your life when rest is mandatory you do not have to always be planting, 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 and digging for a harvest. Even mm -hmm. in the natural, this time of year, there's not much going on out there. You know, like very, very little sunshine, very, mm -hmm. it's cold. Like mm -hmm. in, in your body, in your mind, in your spirit, this is the season for you to rest yeah. and be rejuvenated mm -hmm. and get ready for spring. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. And if you're going to plant seeds, plant seeds in you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Plant seeds in yourself. That's yes. what we're doing. We're moisturizing. We are hydrating and we're doing all those things, taking care of ourselves. Absolutely. Tis the season. Yeah. Tis the season. Absolutely. I love it. Mm -hmm. Tis the season. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Miss Lisa, I appreciate this conversation. I'm so glad we got to see, I got to see your smiling face. Um, same, same. I, I really appreciate, you know, God bringing us together and for how you Absolutely. pour into me. I really appreciate that. And I'm a firm believer in telling people while they can hear you, you know, that you appreciate them instead of, all those theatrics yeah. at the funeral. Um, and so I want to publicly tell you how much I appreciate it. Yeah. James, you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. It's, it's an honor to be on this journey with you. And I, and I don't say that lightly. It is an honor. I, you say how much I inspire you, girl, you inspire me. And whenever I told you before the show started, it's like before, <laughs> you know, when I'm going, Hey, I don't know. I don't know. I'm tired. I don't want to. And I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not liking it. And, you know, just all the things that we grumble about. And I go, but there's James Cena and she does this in pain. She does this, not having all the tools and resources that she would like to have. And I just so admire what you do, how you get it done. And it's like there is no excuse. I, this is no excuse, James Cena. It's wow. like she will find a way and get it done. And so I admire <laughs> you for that. Um, so when I get so stuck much. and it's like, I can find a way. It's like, I'm going to find a way and get this done. <laughs> I'm going to get it done. I'm going to find a way yeah. and get it done. Because if James Cena yeah. would do it, I can do it too. So Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, we don't have any questions. Um in the comments for you, but we thank each one of you who have joined us. Those of you who will be listening in the replay, thank you so much. Um, Lisa, tell us how we can reach out to you and connect with you 
um, not you know just to be your Facebook friend, but we also want to be able to help support your creativity. Absolutely. So we are still fundraising. We have not gone into production yet for My Father the Queen. So that is my um, first feature film that um, I'm so happy to bring to you all. And so if you're interested in supporting that work, you can go to myfatherthequeen.com. Go take a look at the crew, read some of the reviews, and then you can go directly from that site to the crowdfunding site if you so feel led and make a donation. We are still taking donations. We are taking meetings. Yes, we are. Um, So if you know somebody who knows somebody or um, somebody who just wants to invest or learn more about indie filmmaking, I'm happy to have a conversation. Um, You can go to prettyworkstudios.com. If you want to reach out to me personally, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I think I have a TikTok account. I'm pretty sure I do. <laughs> Ask me if I'm on it. Um, I know. I know. Um, but de- you feel feel free to reach out on social media. Um, either one of those sites, prettyworkstudios.com or um, myfatherthequeen.com or even my own site, Lisa N. N is in Nancy, Lisa N. Alexander.com. All right. Awesome. All right. Again, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. As usual, you gave such words of wisdom and divine inspiration, and I really appreciate it. And we will be in touch again very soon. I'd like to remind everyone to please um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, It's Let's Talk Destiny with Jamie Green. Also, we'd like for you to like this video and share this video. Every one of us knows someone who is a visionary or a creative person, and they're in a seed, maybe in a season where they're feeling unproductive or whatever the case may be, and they need to hear these words of encouragement as well. So we ask you to please like and share the video. And again, thank you so much, Miss Lisa, for joining me tonight. Absolutely. Thank you, James Cena. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon.